I'm Sandy Aldock, and I discovered these cute little stamps by a company called Sniggle Sloth. And they're very tiny, and I'm going to turn them into a giant piece of artwork, like really big. Are you ready? Big art, tiny stamps. In order to get the proportions on this, my paper needed to be extra big. So yes, I am using a giant sheet of drawing paper for today's project and drew a big tiger face. And I'm gonna use stamps to create the values and basically do a value study of a tiger in rubber stamps. And this is not a project for the faint at heart. This took me a couple days to do because it's so big and the stamps are so tiny. If you were here for Monday's video, you know how small the stamps are that I'm working with. These, however, I just purchased because they were so cute and I liked the handle on them. I thought for this much stamping, I was actually going to need something that was going to be easier on my hand than a stamping block. And I had some glassine paper that I put down under there so that I wouldn't get ink on the page and I wouldn't get the grease from my hand rubbing on the ink and moving things around. I used VersaFine Onyx Black, so it's a nice rich black to be able to do all this stamping with. And basically tried to move around the paper doing as little secondary stamping as possible so I could try to get really clear single stamps. And I wasn't as perfect because I'm a terrible stamper. That's not my forte. But as I tried to get darker, I would stamp a, an image like this one that had a thicker line to it and stamp it over top of itself to make it really black. And for small areas, I had to change to a tree stamp and try to get it into smaller sections. I wasn't going to use very much masking on this. I have one area that I plan to use masking, but I didn't want to use it everywhere because that would be a lot of masking on a big piece like this. So I basically have my lines sketched out to tell myself where the mediums, medium type tones would be, where the darks would be, so that I could create a value study. The medium tone here is done with a leaf that has an open texture to it. The openness is what creates the lightness. And even if it looks when you're looking at it really closely, as if, the dark areas are in some areas similar to the lighter areas. When you zoom back out and you see the whole thing, it does become much more of a seamless picture. This whole project was inspired by something that I saw on Instagram about a year ago, I think it was. And I can't remember for sure all of the details, but I think it was Freddie Mercury. It was a portrait of him. And the person had created it in, I believe, guitar stamps. And it was the most amazing thing. It was so cool. If anybody ever finds that, please message me and let me know where it is because I'd like to link to it so all of you can go see that amazing artwork. I'm using a little bit of Miskit. It's a liquid Friskit that you can paint onto your project and it will mask things out. And on Monday's project, I used Friskit film, which is a dry type of medium and you cut away the parts that you want to be open. And this stuff I've used with watercolor. I would not necessarily recommend it for stamping like this. This was not the best experiment that I've ever done. You'll see why in a few minutes. But it does work really nicely for watercolor and can block out areas so you don't end up getting color in certain sections. But I stamped over top of it and then tried to let it dry for a bit by moving on to some other areas. Anyway, back to Freddie Mercury. I was so impressed with that portrait and the person who I followed at the time who did that, I can't figure out who it is, had also done some other portraits and people were suggesting do a portrait of so-and-so with such and such a stamp. And I just wish I could figure out who that was because it was very cool. And that just goes to show you there's some things that I've seen over the years that I wanted to get to. And until I transformed my YouTube into doing this kind of deeper dive thing where I gave myself permission to play around with different kinds of art and different kinds of projects, 
I never got to this because when I was just putting out so many videos and so much about smaller projects, I never got to the bigger crazy things. But the value study here was off the charts fun to do because I had to figure out when to put in a medium tone, when to put in a dark, how to leave the lights. And here I'm using a what's called a rubber cement pickup. I've had this thing since college, but you can see that the miskit, the liquid frisket, was still mixed with some of the ink because as I'm lifting it up, I'm getting some of that ink back into the white areas. So I had a little trouble with that. Had to go back in and either paint in some white in a few spots, but I tried to avoid that when possible. And I had to add shading into the eye anyway, so that kind of covered up the mess that that made. For the background, I switched to a different shape stamp and used for a whole bunch of this, the, the bokeh portion of the background. I used this one that has just a whole bunch of stamps in a circle. And I also used more secondary stamping here because I was getting tired. You might imagine this took a few days to do and I was really getting exhausted trying to get to the, <laughs> the finish line on this piece. It was fun to do. It was just a lot of work. And even though I would recommend being able to do this, if you want to do something smaller, you need to do it this big in order for these stamps to actually turn out to give you enough detail. That's kind of the problem with this is it has to be big because otherwise the small stamps are going to take up so much real estate that you're going to end up with no small detail and you'd have to do a lot more masking if you did that in a small area. Uh, we get back to the backside of the tiger here and creating dark areas to contrast with medium and light areas. You see all of that detail in the stamping that when you zoom back out, it becomes a full tiger drawing. So happy endangered species day. There's a little bit of it for scale. You can see just how big it is. And if you want smaller projects, you want some ideas for doing smaller things, you can go see Monday's video because that was much more doable for most humans. I will see you guys again next week with more creative fun. Make sure you're subscribed and tap the like button if you haven't already. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.